So yesterday, there was huge news that came out. Uh, if you guys don't know who James O'Keefe is, he was uh, he was originally part uh, part of Project Veritas, and they did they, they do a lot of undercover investigations and news and stuff like that. And uh, we will be talking about this tomorrow on um, what's it called in Project Agro, but this is actually really important to me, and I want to talk about it now. So um, if you guys don't know, James O'Keefe has uh, was a, like I believe he was officially like removed as CEO of Project Veritas. And uh, he basically started his own James O'Keefe news company. And uh, yeah, James O'Keefe, um, one of the big proponents of uh, going undercover and actually doing on the field work and getting stuff. And like, I believe he was the one who actually got some news on like, uh, what's it called again? The hub, the Mr. Hubba Hubba, the prawn hub, the pawn hub, the pawn stars. And uh, yeah, and the thing is that now James O'Keefe was able to get something on the Walt Disney and the Walt Disney Company, and this is freaking huge. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna be in this is gonna be insane, insane, man. All right, here we go. So this this comes to us from Twitter X right up here. James O'Keefe said, "Breaking senior vice president at Walt Disney Company details discriminatory hiring practices." Quote: Nobody else is going to tell you this, but they're not considering any white males for their jobs says michael giordano a vice president of business affairs there is okay so basically i'm gonna go in uh, i'm gonna pause this really quick uh right here uh there's nowhere we're hiring a white male giordano reveals disney uses code words and buzzwords to avoid legal action and given mentions a candidate being rejected for not looking black enough Giordano also admits Disney gives bonuses to executives for practicing DEI, agreeing that diversity helps with financial incentives, which is part of the ESG. That's crazy, man. This guy is so fired. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, great. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. I want to I, I get what your, your, uh, your take on it. So Giordano further claims he's been denied promotions due to his race. Stay tuned for Disney tapes part. This is a part two. Oh, this is going to get spicy. This is gonna be a spicy. Here we go, chat. Here we go. Sorry, here we go. Here we go, chat room. Certainly, there have been times where, you know, there's, there's no way we're hiring a white male. For it's kind of it's, yeah. unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken, but. How would they say it? There's no way we're hiring a white male. That's what they say. Like straight to you? Yeah. Or, okay. They'd be very careful how they message that to agents. According to these videotapes, Disney blatantly discriminates against whites, white men in particular. I think there it is. I'm sort of like well prepared for it. I'm well uh, positioned for it. But as far as Disney's concerned, I'm a white male. That's not what the, who they're looking to promote at the moment. As yeah, that's guy, true. Even Michael has his own doubts about the possibility for advancement for himself at Disney. In fact, Michael actually got to experience Disney's discrimination against white males firsthand. You know, I, you know, I've been at the company 11 years now. 11 so years long. And I have friends in those yeah. divisions, and they're like, look, nobody else is going to tell you this, Mike, but they're not considering any white males for the shop. They're just not. Like, that's not who they want. They even passed over a qualified Jeez. half black person for a promotion because they didn't look black enough. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is blinding. So here's the thing, chat. Um, this is not just at Disney, this is everywhere in Hollywood, okay? This is everywhere in Hollywood. I have a friend. And the thing is that um, he, uh, I, I work with him, and he, if you guys don't know, there was a show back in, uh, back in the 90s, the late 90s, probably a little bit after Power Rangers sort of became super popular here in the US. There was a show called VR Troopers. And one of my friends, uh, he was actually the lead, uh, the lead playing uh, one of the characters in VR Trooper. So I asked him, what else did you work in? You know, I used to watch VR Troopers growing up. And he says, wow, I, you make me sound so old. Well, I was like, but he, he doesn't look old, which is fantastic. It's because probably black don't crack. However, what happened was I asked him what other stuff was, was he in. He said that he, it was like him and a bunch of other guys were auditioning for a role that was for a black person. And then I guess he got denied that position. He got denied that opportunity to play that character and he talked to his agent and he asked why didn't i get that part and he says michael his name is michael i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you 
they told me that you're not black enough. So my friend, he's he's black, but he's not full black. Like he's, I, I believe he might be biracial, but in terms of how black his skin is, right? Because he's a lighter skin, he's a lighter shade of black, and he's not black black. He's not uh, what's it called again? Um, uh, what's it called again? Uh, you know, my name is Star Lord. Who? He's not that black guy, right? Because that 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 guy, he's, he's he's black black. Versus my friend, he's not black enough, so he was denied this opportunity. So there there has been racism that's been going on in Hollywood for a long time now. Right? Like, I, I guarantee you, and I said this yesterday when I was on Dames and Dorks, they, if they're going to recast T'Challa, they're not going to bring in a person who's light-skinned a black person. They're going to bring in a person who's black black. Right? And it's, it's, yeah, it's insanely, insanely racist. And, and, and the thing is, if you guys don't know already, I work on a Marvel game. So, but I don't work directly with Disney. But the thing is that this is this happens all the time, right? I have a I have another friend who I believe she at the time she was working at Cartoon Network or Warner Brothers, and they said that they were looking for a background painter, right? A background artist, BG artist, right? Well, that's what we call it in the industry, and they said that they are only hiring BIPOC. And if you guys don't know what BIPOC stands for, which is uh, B I P O C, BIPOC means black indigenous person of color and i i asked her are you hiring are you hiring a background artist because i have a friend who's looking for a job and she's fantastic and she asked me is she black and i said no then they said that this position is for black indigenous uh person of color only i'm like that's I didn't, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, follow up with her, but that's, ins that's insanely racist, right? Just because a person isn't black doesn't mean, like, why can't you just hire people based off, based off of merit, right? Yo, what's going on, Jess JK? How's it going, man? Yeah, it's a disgrace that to the PLCs and other minorities, just like it's a disgrace to whites. Yeah, that's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's insane that they're doing it. And it's now... The thing is that it's it's been happening for a long time, right? And the whole BIPOC incident was prior to COVID, right? So this is back on what, 2017, 2016. So it's it's been around for a long time, but now someone's getting it on tape. And the fact that this person is a senior vice president at Di the Walt Disney Company, right? Um, maybe that's the reason why they let go of Peter Rice. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason why they're letting go a lot of people. I'm surprised Kevin Mayer is still there. I'm, I, I, no, he's he's pretty white too. I don't know, man. But yeah, that, that that that's pretty fucked up. Let's continue. We wanted to hire somebody in the department a few years ago now, um, who was half black, but didn't like appear half black. And um, there was a creative executive who was like, "We're not like that's not that's not what's going on." Like they wanted somebody in meetings who would appear a certain way. Yep. And he wasn't gonna gonna bring that to the meeting. I mean, it kind of feels like we're you know, at some point there's going to be a lawsuit. That's kind of how it feels. Just oh, that. That, that definitely will be. And that is a lawyer talking. So how does Disney explain pushing these discriminatory practices? They use code words and buzzwords. I'm guessing that there is a acceptable code words and buzzwords that are used to explain what they what they're looking for. They might say something like, you know, look, we're not we're, we're not looking at like the usual suspects for this job. What's they the know, usual sus suspects? Like, not like a legally actionable thing. Well, everybody knows what it means. They, you know, they writers and actors here all the time, like, uh, you know, looking to hire writers and actors who bring diversity. I'm not, I'm not looking to bring on any more clients who are white. So if you guys don't know, they also do this with women. All right. So I had a producer who uh who, who i used to work with and i remember when our company got acquired by uh by disney the first thing she asked when we got some disney executives inside a town hall uh she asked why aren't there more uh female executives because all i see is 95 percent men right so basically it's like 95 percent men and she's like why aren't there more females and then the executives couldn't really answer that 
Because if you say, oh, we hire based off of merit and these are the best people that we've got, you can't say that, right? If you say that, you're bigoted. Well, you should hire more females, right? You should hire more stuff. But here's the thing. If I were ever to be a, a manager, CEO, whatever, and I was in charge of hiring, I will hire people based off of what they can bring to the table. I don't care what race, what gender, what ethnicity you are, right? But the thing is, this is diversity, inclusion, and equity. This is, this is DEI, DIE, okay? And the thing is that if you don't have a certain quota, the amount of people that needs to reach that quota, so let's say if you need like... 35% of your company needs to be black and you don't hit that, you're not going to get an additional bonus from these uh, big investment companies such as BlackRock or State Street, right? Or maybe even Vanguard. So that's what's shitty, right? Me being, uh, according to these people, white adjacent, they're probably going to over, you know, overlook me, right? Unless I'm like super hardcore. Maybe I'm too light. I'm, I'm too fancy Asian, right? Maybe you need to be jungle Asian right? Maybe you need to be darker Asian. Maybe you need to be like, I don't know, uh, Filipino or Thai, like dark Asian, right? The ones who have been most oppressed their entire lives, right? Maybe you need to be Indian. But the thing is that a lot of Indian people make the most money in, in, for Asians, right? They're, they're like one of the top like leading like money makers for in terms of Asian demographics. But like the fact that I'm considered white adjacent and, and plus I'm also straight, that's basically the worst of the, almost as worst, right? The worst of the worst, like I said before, and I said this on Project Agro, the worst of the worst is straight white male. The next, the next one is straight white female. The following one is straight Asian, straight, a, a, a straight Asian male, and then followed by straight Asian female, right? In terms of who's uh, more, I guess, better or well-off or uh, considered a supremacist, right? So this is this is insane. Oppression Olympics, whichever you want, yeah. yeah. You mean that they will hire based on their skill and ability? What kind of sort of, yeah. Imagine hiring on how good you are. Damn, what? Hell no. That's the reason why Harvard got, uh, got, got sued. That's why a lot of these Ivy Leagues got sued by a lot of Asian people is because the Asians, you need a 1450 to get into Harvard right and then you know what you need like 1300 for a white and then like 1200 or like a th like 1050 for a mexican and then 850 for blacks like how that's in that that's illegal that's actually illegal right and i'm glad harvard got got freaking sued like it's it's it, it, it's like, oh, do you know, oh, do you, what do they call uh, ucla you see lot of asian Oh my God, let's continue. Welcome to the Disney Tapes. My name is James O'Keefe, standing here in Burbank, California, outside Disney. I know where that is. I used to work there. This is our first part in a series about blatant discrimination and woke policies at the Walt Disney Company. To say that the Disney Company has had a tumultuous five years, well, that would be an understatement. Major box office flops, a losing battle with the state of Florida <laughs> stock is one of the worst performers on Wall Street. And as you'll probably conclude from this report, as well as recent shareholder rumblings, almost all of Disney's recent failings are as a result of Bob Iger and the cast of characters here at Disney that are trying to force woke DEI policies into every aspect of Disney's vast media empire. Man. What used to be a highly profitable company by being the gold standard of family entertainment has now taken is the a dick sharp standard. downturn in the wake of all of its wokeness. Under CEO Bob Jeez. Iger's leadership, Disney's downfall likely started with the insane hiring practices amongst its executives and creative teams. D One of their top DEI officers. Vice presidents claims that they not only discriminate against white men, when recruiting and hiring middle management, they actually give bonuses for hiring and retaining employees that are specifically not white. According to these videotapes, Disney blatantly discriminates against whites, white men in particular. Not a week goes by without a news headline yep. about potential medical supply shortages, threats to our infrastructure or power. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder why Disney is not doing well. Pandemic. Certain medications were mysteriously out of stock. No way will I ever let that happen again. In today's unpredictable world, it's all about being prepared for who knows what they have in store for the next pandemic. Our friends and supporters at the Wellness Company have designed this unique 
prescription-based medical emergency kit that is packed with eight potentially life-saving prescription-only medications. All right, so here's the thing. There is a bug, I forgot where it was, I believe it might have been Texas, that if you get stung by it, it will actually cause you to be allergic to meat. And I'm, and, I, and I'm not talking about penises, chat. I'm talking about eating meat. So hopefully, maybe the wellness company has something that will counteract that because imagine not eating steak anymore. Jeez. Including z pack and Ivermectin, which I use myself while out on the road and starting to feel a bit under the weather. Health is everything. And this is a great opportunity to order a wellness company medical emergency kit. The Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit stands ready to treat over 30 common ailments, ensuring you'll have access to vital medications when you need them most. And now save $45 per kit when you order using the code OMG. $45! Get ready to write this down. Get your Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit at twc.health slash OMG. That's twc.health. Identity politics is very OMG. opposite of That's um, T mediocrity. That's why they have been destroying OMG any mediocrity system per they can for so long. Yeah, because they're also OMG. dumb asses. You know, we have a diversity, equity, inclusion yeah. department who's okay. very involved in like setting standards to make sure that you know shows have diversity. Do you think like Bob has a say in the diversity stuff when they're casting people? Like 100%. Yeah. Well, to what? Damn. Damn. For each show? For each Not that specifically, but like, you know, hey, I want their, I want every show to substantially. Yeah. Iger even as a chief diversity officer, now up until recently, that was Latondra Newton who Oh yeah, we talked about this. Dragging Disney full bore and to its losing culture war by promoting discriminatory hiring practices and introducing gay, lesbian, transgender, non-binary and other characters into Disney's children's animated series and films. Is it like an all across thing, like all of HR, or there's like that one specific person that kind of like... Like the, I forgot Good the question. lady's name. Um, she's the head of the, oh, I know the, you're talking about the, the head of the, the African American lady. Yeah. yeah. So is that like kind of her deciding? She oversees that? a lot of that for sure. Yeah. Um, it, but it's pretty broad, I would say. There are other people in HR who are also focused on that. I would yep. say a relatively large percentage of our top writer creators happen to be done. Uh, oh, I wonder why. A lot of just by happenstance. I mean, like, just like if you, if, if you say whatever. I don't know, whatever, 10 or 15% of the population is there. I would guess that 30 to 35% of our top writers are yeah. you know, gay. And oh, so my God. Lean, lean into train stories more than the average straight writer would. And in an odd twist, Jeez. you have to be a white Jewish guy to be considered for a C-suite job. More on that next week. But now, what? let's meet Los Angeles-based Michael Giordano. Yeah, he, he a is going to get fired and Walt Disney's Senior Vice President of Business Affairs. I do um, like business affairs, so like negotiations for uh, for television. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Nice, that's really cool. So not really like on the creative side. You know, so a lot of it is, um, you know, like knowing like the guild agreements and the union agreements and everything, and, like make offers for the writers and the actors who are going to be out working on the show and the producers and the directors and try to like, you know, get to a place where we can close a deal with them. Now, here, here's the thing, chat. I know a lot of people who work at the Disney company, right? A lot of people. I know a lot of people who, who work in these woke companies. Uh, Disney, Sony, Warner Brothers, uh, freaking Paramount, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, if that's still a thing anymore. Uh, fucking, uh, what's it called? And, and even in games industries. I know, I know people who work at Blizzard. I know people who work at Riot. I, I, like, I... I know a lot of people, okay? Like being in entertainment, like doing art and stuff like that for more than a decade now. Like I, I, I've, I've seen my fair share of woke people and people who are really, really good at what they do. So the thing is, knowing that a lot of people, they hire their own. Okay, it, now here's the thing. Um, if, let's say if you're an extremely woke person and you you will hire woke people for your company, right? It, it, it just that goes to show is because you think that if you're a woke, you are anti-Trump, you are um, you're anti-American, and you are pro um, sending money 
off to uh, a war that you don't even know where the country is located, right? There are all of that kind of stuff. And the thing is, is because if you vote, it, because majority of the time, if you bring in a straight white male and a person who, a person who uh, is a pro-America first, that means that they don't have the same mindset as you do. Because a lot of these people, it's, they don't care about your experience at all, okay? It's experience is like 35% of your, um, your basic, uh, you know, job interview. It's, it's your experience. The other 65% of the job is how well you can mend into their culture, how, how well that you can fit into their culture. I remember when I was, um, uh, what's it called again? When I first started my job uh, at, at uh, this, this Marvel project that I'm working on, I had a person, uh, one of my, um, well, what's it called again? One of the QA guys, like the, the person who's hiring for QA, they're like, hey, Phil, you know this guy, right? I'm like, yeah, is he good? I'm like, yeah, he's really good. He's on time. He's a hard worker. I worked with him for a long time. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I don't care about all that kind of stuff. It's like, is he cool? Is he a cool guy to work with? Is he chill? Is he easy to work with? And, uh, you know, it's it, because it's all about culture. It's all about if you can fit into their culture. And if you don't fit into it, it doesn't matter how badass of an, of an artist you are, how badass of an uh, animator or, um, you know, a writer or a producer you are. If you do not mesh well with the people who work there and the higher ups who work there, you will get let go whenever possible. When layoffs comes around, they'll let you go. They'll put you on a uh, PIP, which is a progress improvement plan saying that you suck ass and you need to get better and the thing is that they will once you're on this pip you will probably won't it's the chances of you getting out of pip is extremely extremely difficult now this happens in a lot in games a lot in animation and a lot in entertainment right so they don't care about your experience they care about how you look they care about your politics of course, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna ask you about your politics because that's illegal, but as how well you can fit in, in, into their culture, right? That's really, really important. I see how, how hot is this person that this person, yeah, this girl he's dating must be insanely hot. Yeah, she must have like big ass tits, you know, like he had big ass tits, a fat ass, you know, like I, 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 I don't know. De definitely not Zendaya and definitely not Lizzo. Let's continue. Help the production, to budget, and so much of my job is just the, the, the negotiating room. And then other people are doing kind of the drafting of the contracts. So, you know, oh wow! So yeah, what's yeah. the negotiating like? I'm like sitting down, trying to figure out. Okay, you know, what what are we gonna what are we gonna pay this actor for this role? Um, what do we think they want? What you know? Oh wow! Kind of strategize that. Everything from you know, how you I don't want to see his dick. How you distribute the show? How you exhibit the show? How you market the show? Things like that. And all of the negotiations and deals. Yeah. One, well, actually, two of our brave undercover journalist and American swiper investigative reporters met Michael on the dating app Hinge. And Hinge. Aside from this story, which focused on Disney's overt discrimination against white men, you'll see later on in this report, and it'll be liberal. There it is, liberal, Michael agnostic. Turns out to be quite the ladies' man. How long have you been on like dating apps? Not very long. Have you been going out? Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, oh. Like, yeah, she must have like massive titties, no. man. Let's dig right into Disney's massive titties. practices of discrimination. If you're wondering how Disney as a company looks at race, gender, and discrimination in the hiring process about how they recruit and hire talent, look no further. I think there are times when it's like so front and center, it's like great because that's the focus, you know? Like we, we have we have so many shows where we're casting and we're like, yeah, we're, we're not even going to see, you know, certain people for it because we need that to, to the role. So this was done yeah. uh, so in... It, it, it was done like a month ago. Want, like they're, they only look for diverse... No, I don't want to see his dick! I think there's certainly a belief that it's just good for society and they big goal. But there's also a belief that, like, we're going to make more money if we appeal to a wider variety of people. And it's a good thing. Because we have shareholders, too, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so diversity helps with that. Damn. Diversity helps with... Yep, ESG money, baby. 
So is it like, do you think it's more so on that side? Are you using like any good prices it gets put to use? I think it's regardless. I think it's okay. regardless. But I think that there are like even conservative people who may not want to lean into it can easily make the argument that like, we make more money when we appeal to a wider variety of people, and that means diversity. Yeah. There's a real focus on no, the show. No, not necessarily. Uh, and I'm sure the movies, too, though I don't deal with that side of it. So, uh, you know, just making sure that the writer's room has a real, you know, diversity, not just, you know, not just gender or sexual orientation and ethnicity, but, you know, making sure that they're hiring some writers who they have certain disabilities where they wouldn't have been hiring or, you know, uh, since there's kind of a really, there's a yep. really broad look whenever we're, we're doing that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's basically how many crippled people work in your company? How many black people work in your company? How many Asian people work in your company? How many blind people, fat people, uh, you know, freaking uh, anyone who has disabilities? How many midgets do you have in your company? It's, it's just everything in the fucking spectrum. You know, you, you basically you want a broad range. Look, I understand. But here's the thing, though. Are you giving up people who are potential, like extremely like talented and gifted in whatever field they're working on to hire these people is because you need to meet a quota so you can potentially uh, get more money. Now, the thing is, like he said, Disney, they do that regularly. They already do that is because a lot of middle management are the people who hire for these positions, right? Like for instance, um, I guaranteed when Kathleen Kennedy started with Lucasfilm, she wasn't in, she started off in either like low to middle management all the way, now she's basically upper management, right? She's senior management. So she started off maybe as a, an AP and then, and then she became like a producer and then she worked her way up, right? So they start over there, right? So once, you come in, you don't say anything, you don't kick the hornet's nest, you don't, um, you know, you, you don't say anything, you, you try to be a good boy and good little girl. And then you, you basically keep your, um, your opinions to yourself until you get to a point where you can actually dictate who to hire and who not to hire. That's when you sort of let uh, some of your, uh, you know, biases out. That's when you sort of let your, um, you know, your, your, your discriminating, uh, trait out that's that's when it happens and then once you get to middle to higher like management then you're like you know what i'm high, uh this person is not black enough this person is not white enough this person is not gay enough this person is not straight enough that's how they hire right so the thing is disney has always been this type of company is because disney sort of grew this you know it was family you know family first uh, entertainment for every kind of family member but what he's saying is they're pushing it even more is because they get the extra incentives to make to make a lot of money. And so yeah, Mickey Mouse and memes weren't memes. No, they're not. Absolutely not. The fact that South Park said put a chick in it and make her gay and lame is not just a meme, it's a fact. And I worked for the Disney company before on two separate occasions. I worked there for uh, at um, in 2008 as a ride operator, and I also worked there as a QA tester uh, when I was working on Disney Infinity 2.0. Uh, they prefer to hire a wide spectrum of people um, of ba based off color, background, ethnicity, because they want to look diverse, right? They want to look diverse. And the thing is, um, uh, the better. The, it, 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 imagine, imagine if you get like a you know a, this woke person that comes in. And it basically is like, wow, your team has a lot of guys in it, right? It's, like, it's sort of like, wait, what is that supposed to mean, right? And especially if this, if this woman can potentially be like, you know, can potentially me to you, you know, you don't know. You don't know. So, um, yeah, Michael Giordano probably not going to be working at um, 20th uh, Century Television and Walt Disney Company uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, he's, probably, he's probably deleted his uh, LinkedIn account, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's continue. Yeah. Yeah. So they talk a big game about DEI, but do they actually do it? Apparently so. They even passed over a qualified half black person for a promotion because they didn't look black enough. Yeah. We, um, yep. we had a situation where yeah. we wanted to hire somebody in the department a few years ago now um, who was half black but didn't like appear half black. And um, there was a creative executive Racist. who was like, 
off. We're not like that's not that's not what's going on. Right. They wanted the full. They wanted somebody in meetings who would appear a certain way, mm -hmm. and he wasn't gonna gonna bring that to the meeting. And so this is like on the this was on the corporate like, side, side, like the side. business side. Never Jeez. Is it like I know a lot? Of, like I have like a lot of pop pop friends who like are not as dark as like you know. So do they care about that or is like the ethnicity actually? Mm -hmm. They say they don't care about it, but the truth is, to yeah, some extent, they, they do. absolutely do. If you're mixed, mm -hmm. right, you don't look black at all, which sometimes happens. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, I'm not so sure. But if you're mixed and you, you can tell they're somebody's part black, but they're not like that black, then okay. Yeah, like I said, a good friend of mine, Michael, uh, he, he he was the lead in VR Troopers. And the thing is, he wanted to go for this part. His 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 uh, basically uh, his his manager was like, "Well, the reason the reason why they passed on you is because you're not black enough." And I'm like, "That's insane." Even actors get that. He's like, "Yeah, you have to be the darker you are, the better it is." Okay, so the more yellow I am, I will probably replace Simu Lu as uh, Shang Chi. Right. The thing is that I I'm pale yellow. I'm like pastel yellow. Potentially even translucent to some people, right? But the thing is that if I'm more yellow, my eyes are more slanted, right? Let's say if, if my eyes were like this, right? My eyes are more like this, and I talk like this, and maybe more yellow, and basically it's like, hello, my name is Failure, and I want to come in as the, the, the Shang-Chi. Uh, at the house, Simulu is gay, and he's not Chinese enough. I'm very Chinese. Disney would be like, oh, let's hire this guy. Let's get rid of Simulu. He's too American anyways. Yeah, see, the more Asian you are, the better, right? And the more black you are, the better. You... I could be an act like yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, I could replace Soul. I could replace Soul. But the thing is that I'm light skinned Asian. I'm not yellow skin. Like I need to fucking look like I'm. I, I'm. I just jumped out of a freaking like Simpsons cartoon, right? I need to look like the the, the freaking text right over here that said Michael Giordano. Like I need to look as yellow as that, right? If I'm not as yellow as that, no way in hell I'll be considered good in Hollywood. Right? No way in hell. I need I need to be you need to fit a stereotype. You have to fit into a stereotype in Hollywood in order for you to get a job. Right? Whether like hello, hello, my name Fela. And uh I want to uh, audition for this job over here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, jumped out of Simpsons cartoon is crazy. Yeah, you you have to you have to fit you have to fit their criteria, right? Like this guy said, like you're black, but you're not black enough. They're not going to come out and say it, but that's basically what they said. Have you tried to play a joke and go pee pee, pee, pee and coke? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I'm, I'm not that crazy. A little bit. Just, just a little bit. A little bit crazy, but not that crazy. No, that, that was so, yeah, crazy. But apparently, Meghan Markle is black enough. You can't make this up. So I would like Meghan Markle, who's pretty white. Right. Yeah. Would she be considered? She would still like, be. Diverse, yeah. Or, yeah. Or... Huh? As a white guy, even Michael has his own doubts about the possibility for advancement for himself at Disney, saying, "Quote: As far as Disney is concerned, I am a white male." Right now, I'm like a half step below a department head. I have a team under me, but I don't oversee a whole department. And I just like to oversee a whole department, whether that's a Disney or having to leave. So. Okay. Do you think that you'll have the opportunity at Disney? It's been 11 years, man. Maybe. I'm not sure. Probably not. Um, I think. I'm sort of like well prepared for it. I'm well uh, positioned for it. But um, as far as Disney's concerned, I'm a white male. And that's not. Yep. What and he's Italian. In fact, Michael actually got to experience Disney's discrimination against white males firsthand. So. Oh, do you think that has a lot to do with it? I don't know about a lot, but it's something to do with it. Really? Yeah. Um, what do you think the competition is? Well, I mean, um, <laughs> I've been up for jobs internally against people who... Now here, okay, now, before I let him finish, if he was gay or trans, he would have he got the job already. Guarantee you. If, 
if Michael here was gay or trans or non-binary, he would have got the job like three years ago. I guarantee fucking to you. Okay. Now, he, now here's the thing. How how can how can you become um how can how can you move up into hierarchy in the oppression olympics right like i said before the one who the one that's most oppressed right now is black trans doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl black trans person is the most oppressed in terms of like the hierarchy of the list right so he is considered straight white male but if he becomes a trans white male trans white male he will he will skip everyone that's straight he will he will basically bypass everyone that's straight right white asian mexican and black right he'll bypass he'll bypass all these categories along with the subcategories because white right now they will wrap whites on the bottom okay the people the, 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 the people who basically have like i guess according to these people the best opportunity right white people's on the bottom especially straight white male. Now, if Michael Giordano over here basically came out as uh, white trans, he'll skip by Asian, he'll skip by Mexican, and he'll skip by black and he'll be, uh, and, and Latino, and then he'll be right here. He'll be he'll be he'll be gay uh, gay trans um, male basically. Yeah, if he caught producer diddling a child, yeah, yeah, but that, yeah, yeah, you don't know, you don't know, man. It, you, it, it, that. that <laughs> Maybe, maybe that maybe that's how Leslie Headland got to where she is. Who have less experience than me, and um, uh, and you know what happened? Okay, and they were given to somebody else. Do you think it had something to do with their? In one or two cases, you know, I was told very explicitly that it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Explicitly, how? What, what did they tell? Oh, I mean, I, you know, I've been at the company eleven years now, so I have friends in HR and I have friends in those yeah. divisions, and they're like, "Look, nobody else is going to tell you this, Mike, but they're not considering any white males for a shot. They're just not. Like, that's." And so it's probably fair that Disney would say we don't want a white person to play this role. Yeah, I mean, I it's funny. About it's funny that James O'Keefe got him to come out with two girls. Man, these two girls must be freaking hot. I want to meet these two girls for research purposes only. I'm married, chat. I'm married, but I'm I'm just saying. Out, we're very careful about messaging because they don't want to get to a discrimination in either direction. But certainly, there have been times where you know there's, there's no way we're hiring a white male. It's kind of it's, yeah. unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken. But How would they say it? There's no way we're hiring a white male. Damn. Like straight Just like that. Or, okay. They be very careful how they message that to agents. Uh, in like email or. Or yeah. whatever right. after getting a dose of disney's discrimination himself it seems like michael may have been hit with a reality check that discrimination against people based upon race is probably not cool yep I mean, it kind of feels like imagine you know, at some point there's going to be a lawsuit that's kind of how it feels. there will be now there will be now and that is a lawyer talking now could it get worse it actually does not only does Disney discriminate against white men, it gives management bonuses to hire DEI candidates over white men, totally disregarding their level of qualification, as long as they're not white. You heard me correctly. That's A crazy, part man. Of some executives' compensation That's actually fucking based crazy. on hiring and retaining black hires. So here's the thing. There, there's this thing that we use called Jobvite. And Jobvite uh, usually have an incentive whenever you get a referral, right? For let's say you get a referral from a person and they get hired on, they work for three months, you get that bonus money. The fact that they actually have for management, if you hire a black person or a person who is diverse, that's part of the DEI, uh, you know, ESG bullcrap, you know, that you get an additional $3,000, $4,000, then that means that they're incentivized hardcore to actually go out of their way is because you know i'm gonna get a ten thousand dollar bonus i'm gonna get a ten thousand dollar bonus if we hire a black trans person 
We're going to get a $10,000 bonus if we hired a non-binary Asian person. Jeez, man, that's crazy, dude. And it, and it does not say, it actually probably doesn't say on their uh, application. You know, if you go to like Disney.com, the careers or whatever, it does not say on their application. But the these incentives and these uh, referral bonuses are actually stated in the company website. So like Disney has this thing called the Disney Hub. And the Disney Hub is where everyone from Disney, the Walt Disney Company, including uh, Marvel, ESPN, Lucasfilm, um, uh, what's it called again? I, all, all across, including, including including the theme parks, they have access to this hub. And then within the hub, you can use this resource. And that's freaking crazy. That's insane. We saw this in the case of IBM. America First Legal has launched a lawsuit. Many people coming out of the woodwork from IBM, from these Fortune 500 companies, all saying they've experienced this. We are certain to hear from people inside Disney who've made these claims. Many people here in Los Angeles, here in Hollywood, very afraid of Disney, very afraid of retaliation against their creative productions or movies or films or jobs for speaking about this truth. But if you have been a victim of discrimination, please reach out to OMG or Citizen Journalism Foundation, and we will try to get Damn. you a representation to get your rights back. I've had it with all my personal and private information. Damn, was that it? Do we have more? Okay, we have more. Okay, let's go back. Slash. Okay. OMG. I mean, HR keeps an, a huge spreadsheet. Yeah. What kind of spreadsheet? Well, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen it exactly, but I mean, literally, like, you know, they have stats. Damn. 17% of our executives at this level identify as XYZ. 40% of our executives at this level identify as, you know, pieces of shit. But they're trying to, they, they want a certain percentage of diversity. Here, which I'm sorry, right. Which are. But are these like these are open goals? Because you're saying they can't say it in such specific uh, terms. So are they well, open goals? They are open goals at a senior enough level. So how does Disney explain pushing these discriminatory? Pre Wait, is that true? Do you think that the director of X Men '97 was fired because they found out he was faking being gay? I can see that happening, right? The thing is that the show did pretty good. Like overall, it was actually pretty good. I don't know. We don't. We don't know. He hasn't said anything yet. Well, I, that that could be it. Practices to the people. Maybe he's fake being black. Well. According to Michael Giordano, it seems like it's a sensitive issue, and they use code words and buzzwords. I'm guessing that there is a acceptable code words and buzzwords that are used. There absolutely, there absolutely is. Actually, I, I know this for a fact. They might say something like, "You know, look, we're not we're we're not looking at like the usual suspects for this job." You know, so it's like not like a legally actionable thing. But so everybody knows what it means. According to Michael, even Disney's human resources agencies are on board with these practices. Hi right, guys, do you know what the code words are for the discriminatory hiring practices? Do you work in HR? They're you like, know? what? We're not gonna say shit. You familiar with the buzzwords? <laughs> they don't know what I'm talking about now, <laughs> but they will soon. They, you know, the writers and actors will hear all the time, like, uh, you know, I'm looking to hire writers and actors who bring diversity. I'm not, I'm not looking to bring on any more clients who are, like, like you know, um, so there's definitely that, that focus. Disney even has an internal organization such as 20th Action Group whose Jeez. sole purpose is to promote discriminatory DEI hiring practices and to push bizarre characters and storylines on children. The question is, can the people just come to work, make their cartoons, and do the discrimination elsewhere? But um, nope. apparently not on CEO Bob Iger's watch. So how is prioritizing these DEI practices over hiring merit-based talent worked out for Disney shareholders, you might ask? Well, over the past five years, the S&P index is up over 88%, and Disney is down almost 30%, making that once golden Makes brand happy. one of Wall Street's biggest disappointments. Yes, the disaster that Disney has become is probably the most glaring example of what happens when you prioritize DEI over talent content creators and executives who truly know how to build value. 
So will Disney turn it all around and hire promote based upon merit? We shall see. This is just part one. We got another tape coming out next week. This is a multiple part series. I spoke with Michael Giordano. You'll see that soon. Oh. We are. You have nothing to say. I haven't, I haven't seen you in here. Oh. Do you work for Do you work for Disney? I'm not gonna. Is this you? Oh. It's over. We had a comment from the CEO. Of Ryan, get out of there! What are you doing? California outside. Walt Disney Company. This is James O'Keefe with OMG. Oh, I can't wait to watch that one. I can't wait to watch that one. Holy crap. That one's going to be crazy.